Hello everybody, and welcome back to the Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Mix playthrough. It is time for us to visit Neverland. We're heading to the second star to the right, and straight on till morning. And once again, Terra, why for the love of God do you keep running into the bad guys? You must get me treasure! Leave them to me! So yes, yeah, straight into battle, and uh, this is always fun. I will say, Neverland can be slightly terrifying when you first enter it, because some of the unversed that you're going to meet are quite deadly. Um, primarily the wild bruisers, which are big monkey-like things with bananas on their heads, and they are, they are quite terrifying, quite powerful, so you do have to just watch out for them. You've also got these things, which I can never remember the names of, um, which are super elemental, so the trick is is that whatever's in the middle of the totem is the element that it's dealing with at that present moment in time. So you can use that to deal with some weaknesses and that will help, and there's the wild bruiser that's so terrifying. <laughs> but it's okay because, you know, we're, we're pretty decently levelled at this point, and also um, a lot more comfortable in terms of the gameplay, so it's all good. Now, in our trip to uh, Neverland here, obviously based on Peter Pan, obviously, um, Captain Hook, voiced by the, the delightful Corey Burton, and uh, Mr. Smee, voiced by the delightful Jeff Bennett. We haven't met the other main characters yet, um, but obviously they will come in time. I have to say, the original, well, the, the, the film, Peter Pan, not my favourite of Disney films. I think part of that is because Peter as a character just really annoys me. <laughs> like, he's just he's such an asshole! But, there we go. Oh, yes. It's a classic, so can't really blame it all that much. We would. Why, I'd have given him a little of this and this. And don't think your efforts mean you'll get a share of me treasure, understand? I'm not after your precious box, Captain. I'm looking for a person. A boy wearing a mask. Ring any bells? No, not a one. Figures. It's me, your blithering barnacle. We're off! We shall leave this place before the light draws them back again. Oh. Hey, hold on. What did you just say about the light? Ah, yes, it's heartbreaking, really. This chest, you see, contains light gathered from all around. And I've got an acquaintance, a boy, who's sure to try and seize it. A boy who's after the light. If it's not Benitas... Then who? Hey, why don't I help you keep the light safe? Maybe you could tell me more about this boy who's troubling you. What's his name? Peter Pan! So, yes, we've got to protect the treasure. From a certain ne'er do well called Peter Pan, because of course, trust the captain of the ship. Right. He clearly looks evil with that handlebar moustache. Always a delight. But yeah, so uh, we've got new Keyblade. <sighs> I like the hyperdrive keyblade, but clearly it, it's it's not the best possible thing for Terra because you tend to want to go more towards the strength rather than the magic. But there we go. And also, part of me is still really annoyed that I never actually went and bought Santet skin because it's not necessarily a move that I would use, but it would have added to me blooming what we call it command collection and 
it makes it just so much easier for when I eventually decide that I want to return to birth by sleep and just go, yes, let's get all of the commands, do all of the reports and so on and so forth. Probably never going to happen, but you never know. Stranger things have happened. Although, I mean, I'd, I'd need to, you know, have cleared my entire backlog of games and that's going to take me bloody forever. So yeah, once again, just messing around with commands. We've got Meteor Crash now, which is a super powerful move. And if I recall correctly, it's really quite epic. There's some really spectacular um, moves that you can create in the latter half of the game. Once you've got all the commands to do it, they are just completely and utterly badass and it's amazing. And also one of the things that I, I do like this trip to Neverland, much more so than probably any of the other Neverlands we've had in uh, the Kingdom Hearts franchise, because Kingdom Hearts 1's Neverland was kind of kind of bland, because all you were doing was being in the ship, and while it was cool, it wasn't anything particularly spectacular. And then, uh, Rechain of Memories was exactly the same as the ship interior, which was just, yeah. Um, then, uh, you had 358 over two days, which was in this vein of um, style. Except it was more, you spent the majority of this time fl or flying between all the different islands, rather than just running. So I'd say, in general, it's probably, yeah, a tie between Birth by Sleep's Neverland and Fever of Two Days' Neverland. Just because both of them capture the essence of Neverland, but do so in different ways. I'd say... Birth by Sleep is Neverland ends up being probably better in terms of what you have to do because you don't have to face down um, I think it's King of the Sea or something along those lines because that boss fight was tedious as all living hell. It's one of the issues with days like I have a fondness for its story as with as many issues as it does have um, but its main issue was that the bosses just were not suited to single player campaigns. They had far too much health and it was just not pleasant. And what I'm trying to do here is uh, get a Thundarka which you can get by hitting the top of the uh, totem pole. But as you can see, it's not really happening. I am going to do it, but I think it's on Ven's story rather than on anybody else's. I could probably do it on Aqua's story if you get right to the... well, once you've beaten Neverland. But... that's a story for another day. Um, I've completely forgotten where my train of thought was. Yeah, I think I was... I was blabbing about something or other. Um, but yeah, with like, the original Peter Pan film, it's one of those things where, I mean, it's, it's really bad, but I'm not the biggest fan of most classic Disney films. Like, I will happily watch them and happily appreciate them, but they don't... They, some of them have aged better than others. I mean, Peter Pan in particular, I think, has aged really poorly, if only because you've got... A bit of racism in it because of the Red Indians, and there's an entire song which is what made the Red Man Red. And it's just like, oh no, 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 it's, it's not okay anymore. And while they present the Indian camp in Birth by Sleep, I'm quite glad that they didn't present any of the actual characters because otherwise, oh boy, that, that would have been that would have been an issue.
But then you look back at it and you just go, well, the problem came out in the 50s. And it was a... It was a very different time back then. I mean, also when the original Peter Pan book came out. Um, it was a very different time in terms of everything. So, uh, Peter Pan and the boy who could, wouldn't grow up, or Peter and Wendy, um, is a 1904 play and a 1911 novel um, written by J.M. Barry, which came out in yeah, 1904 and 1911. So it was back in a time when they were they were very racist in general, and those issues, the race issues of the Red Indians, are present in that version of the story, but. Then they've kind of tried to move away from that over the years. So really, particularly when obviously when Disney took hold of it, they didn't really do much with the uh, actual depth of the original Peter Pan. Because I think there's a lot of darkness in uh, the original Peter Pan. There's a lot of very uncomfortable things that happen, but still. Now, as we're running about here, you will notice that Neverland's actually quite big. Like, in comparison to m most of the other worlds in Kingdom Hearts, both by sleep, it's, it's really quite large. And you've got many different rooms, you're kind of toddling along through. It's really quite fun. And really, this is what I think of when I think of how big a Kingdom Hearts world should be. It is about this. Because... It's just big enough to have some level of exploration in it, but it's not so large that it's incredibly easy to get lost. I mean, it's, it's slightly easy to get lost in the sense of you can potentially... Well, as long as you know the gully is your central point, then you'll realise that you can kind of get to all the key areas from there. And the, the general gist is, you only ever have to go to one location, mostly, with the characters. So, uh, with Terry, you've got to get to Skull Island. And that, that's basically it. Um, Ben's is a little bit more shrunken down, and Aqua's pretty much covers the whole length and breadth of Neverland. But it's that whole thing of, you know, showing different parts of the world. And it is why I think that each of the visits to these worlds in Birth by Sleep does end up working. Because it's that whole thing in games where you're you have multiple character stories all visiting the same world as they go. You always run the risk of the visits ending up getting overly repetitive. But thankfully in uh, Birth by Sleep, because each visit takes you to uh, while it's the same world, you're generally visiting slightly different locations, you're generally dealing with uh, different enemies, mainly in terms of the bosses and the plot elements. The only real crossover moments in uh, Birth by Sleep are Raging Garden, where you tend to see a lot of the same cutscene, the same boss again and again and again. Um, Obviously, you've got Land of Departure right at the start. That's a big crossover moment. Um, there will also potentially be another crossover moment in Land of Departure. Once we've got a little bit later on. We're nearly there, actually. 
and I, I saw a yes fully powered up aqua get in there um, yes so we've got crossover moment in there um, what else have we got a crossover moment in definitely in the final world there's a, a cutscene that definitely repeats there and you will see it many times um, then there's a there's obviously a slight crossover in Castle of Dreams between uh, Terra and Aqua. There's a slight crossover in the Enchanted Kingdom between uh, Aqua and Ven, and that's that's about it actually. I think where they they end up in the same worlds at the same time. There are probably there there are technically a few other instances where they are in the same world at the same time, but they just haven't gotten like they just miss each other generally. No, I'm so close. I'm determined. I will get you. There we go. You see. Just a little bit of masterful platforming and command usage, and uh, that's how you proceed. <laughs> have to say, the surge moves are really helpful, and actually, they are, I believe, the thing that is primarily recommended for dealing with three of the four optional bosses that you can tackle in the game because they allow you to get in, cause a bit of damage and get out of there before they can do anything and oh that, that was a that was a bad bad shout on my part so I'll just have to level something up, else up in the time being yeah I, I get very What's the word? I get very faffy when I'm going into uh, trying to sort out my commands. Cause I'm just like, right, what do I want? I want this, I want that, I want that, I want that. Oh no, but I need that. So that's what tends to happen. And obviously you're getting to see it all in real time! Which is always delightful. Also, I will never get over how fun Sonic Blade is, like, I just want Sonic Blade to be in every single Kingdom Hearts game ever made from now on, because just, even though it's just mashing the triangle button, it's so insanely satisfying that really, I don't care. I just want to cause chaos with my... Giant keyblade flying into enemies because it's just so much fun. Now, this is either going to end well or terribly. Actually, I do like Flame Salvo, it's quite a fun one to, to pull off. Um, okay, so that, that wasn't as painful as it could have been. I thought it was going to be a lot worse, although I do know that the room that we're about to go into can be a little bit of a pain, if only because there's a little path that leads off, which takes you back to another area, and then you kind of got to backtrack all the way back around, because I think you have to drop down and then run back, and that's that's your problem. But oh god, look at all of these D-links that I just haven't used, that I really should use. As I said, it goes a lot better with uh, Ven and Aqua with regards to the D-Links because I do actually pay attention to them. <laughs> I think it's around this point that I did finally start thinking, oh yeah, I should, should probably make use of those because they, they can be quite helpful. And also I do want to show them off. I think it's probably only really Maleficent that I might not get to fully show off. Because I'm trying to think of who gets what D-Link and 
Obviously, uh, Terra ends up with slightly different ones to everybody else because he needs different characters. I mean, it's, it's the way of the world. But I'm pretty sure that Maleficent really the only one that he gets that is not picked up by any of the other characters in any form. So I do hope that I do try to show that off, but we are getting really close to the end of Terra's story now. Because this is uh, the well, in every story, Neverland is your penultimate world before you start the end game. Because as soon as you kind of hit the next story beat, while there are plenty of times to go backwards, it's one of those situations where you really do just keep pushing onwards. And yes, this is what I was talking about. So yeah, it, oh, it's, it's not too bad. Um, it just uh, leads you back up here. Which, as I said, is not horrendous. It's just the slight problem of... You can fall off like that. <laughs> and then you have to go do it all again. But thankfully that, that wasn't as bad a uh, loop round as I thought it probably could have ended up being. And please, no. I like the idea of Slot Edge. It can give you a lot of really awesome money. The only issue with it is that, as you can probably tell, it's not necessarily the most successful manoeuvre that you can pull off, because you don't always get what you want. And I'm really bad at random beam. I think the whole th idea is that he either shoots directly at the enemies, or and then it sort of ricochets off the walls and rams into other things. So it's what it's a move that's probably most useful in terms of small enclosed spaces because you're, then you're, you're more likely to actually run into things. But in these big wide open areas, it just doesn't doesn't do anything. It just ends up being a massive time waster. Now, come on, is one of you going to be nice and going to give me the um, thing I want? Or is it going to take me a little bit longer to get to fully leveled up Stitch? Oh, 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 fully leveled up Stitch! I will take that. I don't have anything to, you know, use this on. Which is rather infuriating. But I suppose that's just one of those things. I will use it. I will definitely use it because Stitch is my baby and I'm not, not going to use his D-Link. Because I love him. But <laughs> there's no enemies to kill, so I can't really do that one, can I? Typical. But yeah, you've got this big wide open area which clearly signals boss fight ahead. But this is actually where our boss fight is going to be. This is actually where another boss fight is going to take place. Just not ours. And yeah, once again, trying to think of what moves are going to prove useful to me in what I'm going into. Um, I mean, really, what would be helpful is if I had, um, I believe it's this slide. Because, as I have mentioned before, each of the characters in their dodge move has an elemental um, version of it. So, Ven has Thunder Roll, Aqua has Fire Wheel, and Terra has Ice Slide. But I believe that Aqua can also get Ice Slide because she's got an ability to be able to kind of slide up close to an enemy to attack him. 
which is quite awesome. And you can see also hogs are ticking of... Wait, I have commands that I haven't levelled up yet. What am I doing? And then I'm also trying to figure out what blooming shot lock to use. The shot locks are, once again, really helpful. But, as you'd probably expect, the issue is just always pulling them off more than anything. But yeah, you look around and you think, oh, is there anything in this area? No. This area is actually just far too big for its own good because you never face any enemies here other than one boss fight in Ventus' story. And yeah, it's just not as, not as fun. And oh, oh, limit storm, eh? I wonder what that does. I don't think I'm ever probably going to really use it. What? I feel. How has that happened? I think I am right. I think I am okay. Because I think potentially two of them are not available until the end of Neverland. But then I know that there are quite a few listed around Skull Island here, so it should end up being okay. I just don't want to enter Skull Island because that way we will trigger sort of the first fight. And it uh, may force me into things that I don't want to do. And uh, I don't know why I haven't attached Sonic Impact yet, because that is just really, really stupidly helpful. Like, really, really stupidly helpful. Like, my god. Why the hell did I not pick that up and attach it sooner? Oh, I'm a crazy sod sometimes. And down he goes. And I will follow because... I want the experience, I don't necessarily, well I do need it, but I don't necessarily need it right now, because the fight we're about to go into is not that difficult. It really isn't. Well done! Pardon me, Captain, but it's about that shooting star I was mentioning to ye. Mr. Smee, I ordered you to drop that. I'll not have you gushing on about some shooting star. Yeah, but, but Captain, uh, most shooting stars twinkle for a bit and then they go out. But this one, it, it, it kept on sparkling and shining even after it crashed down. Why, what if it's really a big, enormous, priceless gemstone? Idiot! Why didn't you tell me? Um, we've a bit of business to attend to and must, I fear, step away. I trust you can see to things till I return? Sure. When Peter Pan gets here, I'll be waiting. Shh. That old codfish. Looks like he's found himself a new flunky. I'll fly down and distract him. Men, you move in and nab the treasure. Are you Peter Pan? That's me. The light is not yours to take. So yes, we actually get to fight Peter Pan himself. Who is, as he has been throughout the entire King of Hearts franchise, voiced by Christopher Seal, who does a very good job of uh, pulling off the voice. Now, the slightly frustrating thing about Peter is that he flies about a lot, so uh, generally your best way of dealing with him is having like shot locks, having homing fire moves. Um, that sort of thing, and also making use of block and counter strike or whatever the hell it is, because otherwise it's not going to work. But you don't have to 
destroy all of his hit points because uh, he goes down very quickly. And we go into a cutscene where Terra finally realizes that he's completely cocked up. Now what is this? Pirate treasure, of course. Jewels, doubloons, you know, the usual stuff. I've been guarding a pile of loot? Sounds like you've been tricked. I'll say. I owe you an apology. I picked a fight over nothing. Aw, oh, it was all in good fun. Not every day I get to fight such a good swordsman. Say, what's your name anyway? Terra. Right then, Terra. Which way did Hook go? They said something about a shooting star. Shooting star? Tinkerbell must be in danger! Men, guard that treasure with your lives! Aye, aye, sir! You go and get him, Pan! Well, I should be on my way. Be on his way, he says. And I like how the chest just dramatically disappears, but yes, be on his way, he says. Exit Skull Island, and immediately... So, yeah, Peter's not our real boss fight for this, and while technically you know I could just go straight back in, um, I've realised that I, I know how to get some of the chests, and I'm hoping that I can get them in the manner that I'm going to try to, because I don't want to actually activate the boss fight. But I do need to go into this top area because you get chests up here, and actually this ended up working. So there's a chest on this side, and then there's a chest on that side. Which, part of me was just like, am I going to be able to get across here? And the answer is, hell yes I'm going to be able to get across here! Sonic Impact was amazing. And uh, yes, then it's just like, well, I'll just drop in. I know I'm not going through the front door, but I'll just drop in and uh, bring the pain. Slightly in cubby. Um, clearly getting their asses handed to them by the Jelly Shades. Um, slightly voiced by Mason Vale Cotton and Cubby by Wally Wingard. So, uh, yeah, they do pretty, pretty good jobs. And, uh, yeah, the Jelly Shades, we've faced them down before. Um, this is definitely a much easier fight in general, because while, you know, it's very easy to get hit, there's no time limits, you can just sort of Effectively, Sonic Impact through a lot of them. Um, shot locking through them causes chaos. If you have like zero gravity, aero magnet, magnet in particular does very good job. Then you can obliterate their numbers very quickly. And as you can see, this is really not that terrifying of a fight. Um, and you don't even have to defeat all of them, so even better! Boy, you sure cut that monster down to size! Monsters. Plural. Ahoy! How fair ye, lad! Hook! Go hide. Fine. All's well. What's that? Tinkerbell, one of Peter Pan's dearest friends. Can I take a look? So long as I have his precious pixie, Pan's demise is all but assured. <laughs> What's the meaning of this? You know, I didn't give it that much thought. Just doing what my heart tells me. That's mutiny! And you'll walk the plank for it! 
that sound. Wow! Hooray! We sure show hook this time. Every star up there is another world. Huh? Uh. Terra. Yep. Hard to believe there are so many worlds out there besides our own. The light is their hearts. And it's shining down on us like a million lanterns. What? I don't get it. In other words, they're just like you, Ven. What does that mean? You'll find out someday, I'm sure. I want to know now. treasures hmm did you guys really want the jewels and gold that badly hmm? no nah, we don't care about that stuff uh but a uh, pan was counting on us i'll tell you what put the stuff that's really special to you in there that can be your treasure yeah, yeah! real swell idea thanks <gasps> Kind of makes me wonder what I'd put in there. <laughs>